Welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. I'm Travis Richmond. DaVinci Resolve includes a built-in tool called the Foley Sampler, which allows you to map your sound effects to the keys on a MIDI keyboard. Then, record those sounds live to picture during playback. Now before I show you how this works, let's talk briefly about why you might need Foley effects. Foley effects are sounds created in post-production to add realism to a film. Things like footsteps, the sound of a character's clothing as they move, and the sound of props used in the film. Here's a sequence of shots from a short film our team worked on of a soldier stealthily moving through a forest. While we did record sound on set, I wanted to augment his footsteps with some additional Foley sounds. If you have a good mic and a recorder, you can record your own and use that sound effect in Resolve. Steve and I took a quick trip outside our studio with a digital recorder and a shotgun mic so Steve could record my footsteps. I changed my speed and intensity to ensure I got a few steps that would work. Here we are back in Resolve, in the Fairlight page. Here I have a timeline with a soldier sneaking through the forest, with some ambient sounds. I'd like to add some footsteps to the scene. I'll navigate to the Effects Library, to Fairlight Effects, and then locate the Foley Sampler. I'll add it to the Audio 3 track by clicking and dragging. Right away, the Foley Sampler UI opens up. I'll close the effects library. Before I move on to the sampler, I wanted to point out in the mixer that the Foley Sampler was added as an instrument input for the A3 channel strip. I will be recording to the track using the sampler. By default, there are no sounds in the sampler. I need to add one. I can do this several ways. One is choosing Add Sample from the Options menu. I could drag and drop it from the finder, or I could locate one in the sound library or media pool. You'll see in my media pool the audio I recorded with Steve earlier, labeled FS Foley. I'll drag and drop that right onto the Foley sampler. The UI updates, and now we can see the sample above the MIDI keyboard. I'll mention before moving on that you can connect a MIDI keyboard for use in Resolve and with the sampler. I don't have a MIDI keyboard, so I'll be working with the mouse today. Where the sample is mapped to the keyboard is determined by the key section here. There are three settings, low, high, and center. Low refers to how far left the sample is mapped. Right now, it's set to 36. So I know that the C2 key here is key 36. If I adjust the knob, you can see the sample moving farther down the keyboard. I'll leave it set to 36. High is the same as low, but on the opposite end. If I adjust it, I could map the sample to the left side of the keyboard. Center determines where the original sound is mapped, and right now it's set to 36. Before I click the key to play back, I need to arm the track to hear the sample. I'll move the sampler out of the way and click the R on the Audio 3 track to arm it. Now when I click and hold the key, we hear the sample play back. Every key to the right of the center key will play back the sample at a faster speed and a higher octave. I'll click and hold the last key so you can hear that effect. I'll set the center control to 84. Now all the keys to the left will play the sample slower and at a lower octave. I'll set the center control back to 36. Now I'll move on to the sample section. Here I can see the sample's waveform and change which part of the sample is mapped to the keys. If I play the sample, you will see the playhead moving across the waveform. By the way, right clicking a key will play the entire sample without having to hold the key down. To stop playback, just click the key again. The range section here is where I can adjust which part of the sample I want to use. I can do that just by adjusting the start and end parameters. Now if I hold one of the keys, I'm only sampling that new range. I'll set those back to their defaults. It would be great if I had individual steps mapped to individual keys. To help with that, I'll navigate to the Options menu and choose Split Sample. The Foley Sampler analyzes the waveform and splits the sample, assigning separate sections to different parts of the keyboard. If I click on the bars here, you can see the different sample waveforms. 
At the far left, I have the original sample. Clicking through the different samples, it appears that FS Foley 3 has the most distinct steps. I'll play that back. That sounds good. I also want to mention that the split feature works best when the sample has various isolated waveforms throughout the sample. If it has some continuous sound through the sample, the split feature may not work. I'm going to remove Foley 1 and Foley 2. I'll select them one at a time and choose Delete Sample from the Options menu. Great. I want to have three instances of the Foley 3 sample here. I'll select the original sample and choose Split Sample again. You can see here that I now have two identical Foley 3 samples. I'll delete the Foley 1 and 2 samples again. And then repeat the process of splitting the original sample and deleting the ones that I don't want. All right. Now I have three identical samples on my Foley sampler, but I want to limit each sample to one footstep. I'll select one of the Foley 3 samples and then adjust my start and end range parameters around just one of these footsteps. Great. If I play the C3 key and watch the sample waveform, the playhead is limited to that new range. I'll continue adjusting my start and end ranges for the remaining two samples so that each one is set around a single footstep. Great. Lastly, I'd like these samples to be limited to one key so I can park them right next to each other on the keyboard, making it easier to play them along with the video. I'll return to mapping, choose my first Foley 3 sample, and then set my high setting to 48 to match the low setting in the key section. Center is automatically set to 48, and the sample is limited to just the 48 key. For my second Foley 3 sample, I'll set the low and high parameter to 49 to ensure it is mapped to the key directly after the previous sample. And for the last one, I'll set it to 50. And yes, these black keys do get used. So now, I have these three different sound effects mapped to these three different keys, and we can now record our footsteps. Another way to have accomplished all this would have been to add the original sample three times and limit the ranges of the samples to the individual steps but I wanted to show you the split sample functionality. On to recording. I'll move the sampler out of the way slightly and park my playhead at the beginning of the timeline. The track is already armed, so I just need to click record and play the sampler keys while watching the viewer. Then click stop to stop recording. I'll move my sampler out of the way and expand my track. Here we can see the footsteps I just recorded. I'll play that back. It's not great, and it sounds like the soldier stepped on the same twig over and over again. When adding sound effects to your project, avoid making things sound overly repetitive. The audience will pick up on it right away. Instead of deleting this take, I'll just move my playhead back to the beginning of the timeline and press record to try again. and stop. Great. I'll close the Foley sampler. Because I recorded over my first take without deleting it, Resolve has saved both recordings for me. To access the different takes, I'll navigate to the View menu and choose Show Audio Track Layers. And here you can see the two different takes. If I expand this track, you can see that the waveforms are different. Audio track layers work a lot like video tracks. With video tracks, whatever is on top takes visual priority. With audio track layers, whatever is on top 
will take priority and will be what you hear on playback. If I prefer to have this first take that I recorded, I simply just click and drag up. And as with any other clips in the timeline, if your takes aren't perfect, you can edit them. Just select the clip, make a cut, and adjust the timing as needed. And then when you're done, going through your takes, I recommend deleting the bottom take if you won't be using it. For instance, I'll make a cut and move this clip to the right to leave a gap. Then I'll return to the view menu and hide the audio track layers. My second take is going to fill in that gap that I created with my edit. This is great for any kind of recording and resolve, giving you the ability to easily cut takes together. But I don't need to do that in this case. So I'm going to bring back my audio track layers, undo that edit, and then I'm going to delete my bottom take. Hide my track layers and then continue editing. Before I end, I wanted to show you one more thing. I'll navigate to the mixer and click here to open the sampler UI. Up until now, the samples play once per key press, but you have the option for looping. In the sample section, I'll enable loop, but in order for loop to work, you have to ensure that the loop range falls within the regular range. So I'm going to adjust my start range here, and then adjust my end range and make sure it's within my regular range. Now if I click and hold, the sound effect will loop. The Foley sampler is a lot of fun to work with, and you should definitely give it a try on your next edit. So what do you think? Leave your comments below. If you like this video, we recently released a full tutorial on editing and mixing audio using Resolve's Fairlight page. You'll find a link to it below. And if you want to see more Resolve tutorials, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Thanks for watching.